Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Macon Bibb County Board of Commission meeting. This is our pre-commission meeting. Today is Tuesday, August the 6th, and the time is now 5 o'clock. I'd like to officially welcome everyone here and call this meeting to order. Uh, just to let you know, we do have two items. Uh, well, we do have an executive session tonight, and I do expect to uh, take a vote come out of the executive session on a couple of items. So this time, we're going to go ahead and uh, begin our meeting. Uh, and we also have a hearing at 545, uh, a hearing on abandonment of a road at 545. Um, so we'll go ahead and go to item 2A, which is the July 16, 2024 pre-commission meeting. I get a motion to approve the minutes. Certainly. Motion by Mary Protein Clark, second by Commissioner Wynn. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries. Sounds like ESPN down there, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, we got a couple of alcohol licenses uh, as, as usual. Uh, not all of these are just simple, but we'll begin with item 3A. This is a new alcohol beverage license. This is a Bloomfield grocery located at 4175 Bloomfield Road. You can see a picture of that store. Uh, legal recommends denial, and the reason for denial is because the business has self-identified as a food mark. However, upon inspection by code enforcement, the business is operating as a vice mark. Additionally, at the business location does not meet the distance requirements of 4-122 because it is located within 100, mile, 100 yards of a church or church grounds, which is right next door to that. For those reasons, uh, they cannot get an alcohol license there because of the time period uh, has elapsed uh, and not grandfathered in. So at this time, we'd entertain a motion uh, to approve the denial. Motion by Commissioner Wynn. Do we have a second? Second by Commissioner Bailey. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries. And uh, we'll ask legal to take the appropriate steps necessary for that. Item B is the, uh, the infamous family supermarket. Uh, doing business as family supermarket. This is licensed prevented to commission on July 16th. If you recall, did not receive the necessary five votes for approval. It was presented to commission on February the 6th. A motion was made to approve it, but it died for lack of a second. Uh, but understand a couple of commissioners went out to the site since that time. So at this time, uh, we are going to ask... Um, for a motion, well, actually for a vote on that, they do all the legal and um, necessary requirements, including the certificate of good standing, to operate as a family supermarket. So this time we entertain a motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Howell. Do we have a second? Second by Commissioner Lucas. Uh, Commissioner Watkins. I was hoping for a little bit of feedback on what was discovered from individuals at said visits. Uh, Commissioner Howell. Yes, I went out the day after we discussed this last meeting and just did my own walkthrough. Uh, everything I found in the, found there was in order. I would uh, be more than satisfied to buy groceries there. Uh, the meat I saw was fresh. The produce I saw was fresh. Uh, the store was clean. Um, so that, that swung my opinion of it, and that's why I approve it. Thank you, Mr. Howell. Commissioner Walker, do you have any other questions? No, I do. Okay. At this time, uh, I'll, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries eight to one with uh, Commissioner Bronson voting against. Seven to one? Oh, Mr. Jones is there. Commissioner Jones. <laughs> Seven to one. We're going to move on to item C, which is Club Dream. Located at 8470 Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard in Macon, Georgia. County attorney recommends approval for Club Dream. This is a change of ownership of an existing club and lounge. They've been operating under a temporary permit. They meet all the legal and statutory requirements, including a certificate of good standing. So this time we entertain a motion for approval of Club Dream. So moved by Commissioner Lucas. Got a second by Commissioner, who is that? Watkins. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries will be sent to consent agenda. We have an abandonment of the right of way. This is a resolution of Macon Bibb County Commission to authorize the mayor to close and abandon certain portions of an unnamed right of way running through the Macon Bibb City Hall parking lot. You look right out that window, you will see that parking lot right there, and you know we're about to do a project there. So this includes extending right of way through the space of Plum Street and to remove such paths from the official road map. What's surprising to me is somebody hadn't named that road after somebody. But at this time, this is going to be abandoned property. We do have a hearing <laughs> at 545. <laughs> that would be the Luke and Bronson, Wynn, Clark, uh, for a small price of 
So we'll have a hearing on this at 545 too, but we're gonna go ahead and take a preliminary vote on this prior to that, and then we'll put it on the consent agenda if it passes later. So I'll make a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mayor Porten Clark. Commissioner Watkins, did you have a question, sir? And you mentioned, I guess y'all explained the project later on? Uh, what's re-explained it? Yes, sir. Later on, not today, but yeah. All right, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries to be sent to consent agenda. Item 5A is a resolution making Bibb County Commission authorizing the mayor to enter into a construction contract with Stafford Buildings and Consultants, Inc., an in amount not to exceed $2.578 million, 105 for the construction of renovations and improvements to Rosa Park Square to be paid for Rosa Park Square Fund. As you know, as you recall, we've been working on this project for a while. We put it back out to bid. It was delayed just a little bit because of the uh, potential breach that we had. Uh, but after that, we had several people that applied for it. It went through the committee process and the committee recommends uh, awarding the contract to Stafford Buildings and Consultants. So at this time, I entertain a motion for approval. Okay. Motion by Mary Pro Tem Cart. Do we have a second? Second by Commissioner Lucas. Commissioner Wynn, you have a question? Yeah, um, it hadn't necessarily to do with the project itself, but there's a memorial out there right across the street from City Hall. Yes, yeah, we from, discussed the last time, that doesn't change anything with the, with the uh, memorials. It, it will memorials. stay there, right? That's right. There's two things, and I think both of them are gonna stay there. Right. Okay, thank you, just want clarification. No problem, thank Commissioner you. Lucas, you have a question? Uh, is the alcohol prohibition still in place? As of today, at a, August the 6th, uh, yes, ma'am. You, you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a roll. Yeah, I just I'm wanted to make roll. sure because there was some real strong discussion about that several years ago. I mean, of course, it's subject to change or not in the future, but right now it remains alcohol free. Okay. We do have a motion and second. There's no further discussion on the matter. I'll call for a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. And I see our chairwoman here today from Rosa Park Square. Thank you for being here, Ms. Cook. I know you're excited. Hopefully it doesn't come off the consent agenda tonight. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go ahead and move into the Eagle Scout project. We have the Eagle Scout here tonight. We have a resolution making Bibb County Commission authorizing accepting the repair of a bridge along Theron Usry Trail as Eagle Scout, a Boy Scouts project with the cost to be borne by the repairs to completed by the Boy Scouts of America. Um, at this time, we'd entertain a motion for approval of that project. Got a motion by Commissioner Bronson, second by Commissioner Wynn. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries to be sent to consent agenda. Uh, commissioners, at this time, we do have a need to go in executive session, and we'll ask all the appropriate folks in the executive session to step back there as well. Uh, this time, I entertain a motion to go in executive session for the all those reasons allowed by law include consultation with an attorney for other legal counsel to discuss pending or potential litigation, settlement of claims, and HR personnel. You get a motion to go into executive session? Motion by Commissioner Wynn, we have a second. Second. Second by Mayor Pro Tem Clark and Mr. Howell. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. We're now in executive session.
I got a motion to get out of the second session. Motion by Commissioner Bronson. We got a second. Second. Second by Mayor Pertin Clark. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. We're now at the executive session. We do have a couple of items to vote on uh, coming out of the executive session. That is item 8A. 8A is agreement with the Bibb County School District and the Central Door Development Authority. Resolution of Macon Bibb County Commission authorizing the mayor to execute an intergovernmental agreement between Macon Bibb County School District and the Central Door Joint Development Authority regarding the distribution of pilot programs for Project BESS, B-E-S-S. -S. That's my motion. Can I get a second? Uh, we heard it down there. We've got a motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries to be sent to consent agenda. We have two items to add to the agenda. The first one um, is to, the first item to add would be a resolution to make a Bibb County Commission to appoint uh, a county engineer for the lawful purposes. And that, that person is Mr. John Hayes. We get a motion to add that to the agenda. A motion by Commissioner Howell. We have a second. Second by Commissioner Wilder. We have one other item uh, to add to the agenda, and that is a, uh, a settlement claim. It's the ordinance that we discussed. This is county to authorize a supplemental appropriation amount up to $500,000 from general fund, fund balance to the county attorney's office for judgments and losses line item. Can I get a motion to add that to the agenda? Mm -hmm. Motion by Mayor Pertin Clark, second by Commissioner Jones. <laughs> Got a third out there. So we have a motion to add. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. So we'll call those one by one to take an official vote. Uh, this is a resolution of making Bibb County Commission to appoint John Hayes as county engineer for all other lawful purposes. And Mr. Hayes, is he still here? He is. Um, so at this time, I entertain a motion to name Mr. Hayes as the engineer. Motion by Commissioner Jones, second by Commissioner Bailey. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries. Congratulations, Mr. Hayes, on your appointment. And also, we're going to move a motion to approve the settlement that we discussed. So I need a motion to approve that. Motion by Commissioner Wynn. Do we have a second? Second by Commissioner Howell. All those in favor of the motion to settle the claim as mentioned, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries and be sent to the consent agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, this ends our regularly scheduled pre-commission meeting, and we're going to move directly into our commission meeting for tonight. I'm sorry, we got a public hearing. So we're going to move directly into a public hearing that we have. And this time, I'll ask our attorneys, Adriana Beavers, uh, to discuss something we previously voted on tonight, but this is the lawful hearing that we're required to have. All right. Good evening, Commissioners, Mayor Miller. As uh, Mayor said, I'm Assistant County Attorney Adriana Beavers. So we have a public hearing tonight for the abandonment of certain portions of unnamed right-of-way that lay out in the Macon, Macon Bibb County City Hall parking lot. This will not actually impact any areas that are generally used by the public for travel. They're just some historic right-of-ways that need to be abandoned in order to proceed with a project development that's going to be taking place in that space in the near future. Is there any comment, um, is there any comment on this abandonment? as usual. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Now we're going to adjourn that meeting and move on to our regularly scheduled television show. All right. So uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Macon Bibb County Board of Commission meeting. This is our regularly scheduled meeting. We thank you for being here today. Uh, this time we'll begin our meeting like we always do with a call to order, and then we'll have a prayer and then the Pledge of Allegiance. So those of you who can and will please stand, and I'll ask Mr. Ned Dominic to come up to the podium. Good to see you, Mr. Dominic. Make sure his microphone's on, and you'll be led in a prayer, and then we'll be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Is my mic on? Yep. Thank you all. It's really, I know some of you for so many years here. It's great to be able to pray for you. So come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Lord, I want to start off just by thanking you that we did not get hit by that storm. Glory to you, Father. Glory to you. And Father, I just I thank you for a sense of unity and, and, and good spirit in this room that I've just, just I've seen it so many different ways over the years. And I thank you for the vision that's going on in this city and the progress that's happening here. It's just really amazing. So Lord, your word says that if we ask for wisdom, you will give it to us without reproach. So I'm asking for wisdom for all of our commissioners and our mayor and everybody who's working here as part of the city. Just, just bless them. Father, I thank you for long suffering for all the meeting, meetings these guys have to go to, guys and gals. They go on forever, and I just acknowledge that. So, Lord, bless this, this group and have your way. Be sovereign over this city now, in Jesus' name. Amen? 
Amen. 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 Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. you may be seated. We have several presentations tonight, and we'll begin this first presentation with the National Black Business Month presentation, and that will be performed by uh, Commissioner Paul Bronson. Mr. Bronson, if you don't mind going down to the podium that he's about to move and make your presentation. Then we also have a recognition right behind that of Major Taylor Middle Georgia, and then presentation of the five new Alpha Military Spouses Sorority in that order. Can you hear me? Hey, how about now? Oh, you're awesome. Look at you guys. Okay. Gotta have fun when we can, right? So, be reading the proclamation today for the National Black Business. Thank you guys for everything that you're doing within the community. Um, Want to continue to encourage you guys and empower you all. Uh, for those that are watching at home, if you have a small business, make sure you get out, make contact with our small business director, and let's continue to grow this city uh, in the right direction that we're going. That being said, whereas the month of August is observed as National Black Business Month, recognizing the successes, milestones, and historic progress of black businesses and entrepreneurs. And whereas throughout history, despite facing systemic racism, redlining, and even extreme violence, black businesses continue to grow and thrive throughout the nation. And whereas we recognize the work of the Make and Bib Office of Small Business Development Small Business Affairs with as many partners like the Making Bib Georgia, Making Bib Georgia, Making Middle, forgive me for that, Making Middle Georgia Black Pages, Central Georgia Coalition of Black Businesses, SBDC Newtown Macon, and others are working together to bring initiatives and resources to support black owned businesses. And whereas this year, as black businesses continue to recover, from economic losses offset by the pandemic and other mitigating factors, our communities need to recognize, support, be intentional, and celebrate National Black Business Month. Now, therefore, I, Lester M. Miller, I'm not Lester M. Miller, do hereby proclaim August 2024 as National Black Business Month. We encourage and ask all residents, fellow business owners, as employees, uh, to urge to, to learn more about, support, and explore our local black businesses. Mr. Mayor, would you come on down? As he's coming down, I read the rest of this. And witness, therefore, I hear unto set my hand and cause the seal of the consolidated government to be affixed this sixth day of August 2024. I'm doing a dual duty today. <laughs> Mayor, commissioners, 
I want to let you know on July 21st, 2024, three young people from Macon took the nation by storm. They had a grueling crit race Saturday morning. They got on a plane Saturday night. Sunday, they had a 30-minute practice. And guess what? All three of them brought home gold. Macon is now being known for our youth biking program. We are named Major Taylor Middle Georgia. It's named after Major Taylor. He was the fastest man sprinter in the world in 1899. That's 34 years after slavery. A black man was the best in the world. This is what our kids look up to. We're the only youth chapter in the world, and that's why we get to travel the world. As a matter of fact, kids, where did we go a couple of days ago? We went to Canada. We were the only kids invited to ride in Canada, and it was a life-changing event. So today, I want to take this opportunity, and if I can get the mayor to assist me, is our three gold winners. I want to highlight them, let them take a picture with the mayor. Then I want all our families and supporters and other team members to come for a group picture because I'm going to share this everywhere possible. So our first winner is our youngest. Major Taylor won his first gold medal at age 11. Guess what? Liana Hill won her first gold medal at age 11. So Liana Hill, come on down. So each kid is going to get their individual picture with the mayor, and then we're going to take a group picture with all the supporters. Hey, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Liana. Our second gold winner, I remember he first came, his mom brought him. He didn't want to look up. He didn't want to put his helmet on. And now he has become a beast on the mountain bike race, and he is a gold medal. And when I say gold medal, this means that people all over the nation came and did the George Street Bike Challenge. And with our kids doing a 30-minute practice, they beat everybody. So our next winner is Mason Robinson. And, and finally, and not least, I've heard three people, and I'm going to tell the mayor, that he may be our first Tour de France uh, participant. I have, everybody's told me that this kid is going to go pro. He has been an inspiration. He's a good kid. He's been an inspiration to our entire team. So can we give a round of applause to Mr. Stephen Hill? Stephen Hill is 15, Mason Robinson is 16, Liana is 11, so we are represented well. So really quickly, Mayor, can all the supporters, parents, other team members, please come down. You're going to see these kids' faces more and more as we're racing. Come on in, Jalen. We got another team member. Come on down here with the mayor, and let's take this group picture.
Well, thank you all for being here tonight. And at this time, we got other business to handle. If you want to leave, don't feel like you have to stay here. But I will tell you that I asked Mr. Hill just a moment ago um, if he was going pro, and he said, yes, I will. So that's confidence that I like to hear. So we have one final presentation. This is the presentation proclamation of the five new Alpha Military Spouses Sorority. And that will be a read and presented by Commissioner Lane Lucas. You got go. Thank you so much for allowing me to uh, present these. I just feel so honored to be able to do this. This is a proclamation from the Office of the Mayor, Macon Bibb County, Georgia, and it reads, whereas five new Alpha Military Spouses Sorority Incorporated was founded on August 3rd, 2020, in Savannah, Georgia, by three military spouses who had the vision, drive, and passion of creating a military spouse's Greek-lettered organization that stands on love, integrity, and respect. And whereas Phi New Alpha Military Spouses Sorority Incorporated was incorporated in Richmond, Virginia on August 12th, 2020, and became a certified 501c3 nonprofit organization in January of 2021. And whereas Five Mu Alpha Military Spouses Sorority Incorporated is partnered with the Keep Make and Be a Beautiful Rainbow House Rescue Mission of Macon, Stepstone Family, Youth Services, Big Brothers, Big Sisters of America Foundation, and Wreaths Across America, assisting the local and veteran communities through outreach. And whereas, Phi Mu Alpha Military Spouses Sorority Incorporated continues to connect with veterans and their families of all branches of the armed services, providing food, clothing, shelter, job opportunities, mental health, and veteran affairs resources while advocating for the eradication of veteran homelessness. And whereas, five mu Alpha Military Spouses Sorority Incorporated strives to make an impact on the local veterans communities through acts of selfless service and caring for others, taking every opportunity to engage and participate in the community and advocate for each veteran and military family. Now, therefore, the mayor, the Honorable Lester M. Miller, along with your other nine elected members of the Macon Bibb Commission, do hereby proclaim August 3rd, 2024, as five new Alpha Military Spouses Sorority Incorporated Day in Macon Bibb County. Let's give them a hand for that. And with this, we all encourage all of our citizens, all 160,000 of our citizens to commend this organization for its efforts to serve both our community and veterans with honor, duty, and respect. In witness whereof, the mayor has hereunto set his hand and caused the seal of the unified government to be affixed. On today, let's give them a round of applause.
Thank you for being here tonight. And I appreciate that presentation by the presenters there. Uh, we do have, uh, we don't have any public comments on agenda items tonight. Uh, we do have a couple more items to take care of, the approval of the minutes. Approval, approval of the minutes for July 16, 2024. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion by Commissioner Wynn. Do we have a second? Second by Commissioner Howell. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries unanimously. We're going to move on to the consent agenda. This consent agenda will be items A through H, with G and H having been added uh, to pre-commission. And we'll accept from that item C, which is the separate vote that we'll do on Rosa Park Square. So this time we'd entertain a motion for approval, items A through H, with the exception of item C. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion by Mayor Pertin Clark, second by Commissioner Bailey. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, we're gonna move on to item C. This is a, item C is a resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission authorizing the mayor to enter into a construction agreement with Stafford Builders and Consultants, Inc an amount not to exceed $2,578,105 for the construction and renovation and improvements of Rosa Park Square to be paid from the Rosa Park Square Fund. Uh, this amount uh, further goes on to indicate that $900,000 of this came from the sale of property from Wheelie Sea Hill Annex and another $1.5 million uh, from Macon Bibb County with other funds to be raised uh, through fundraising. So at this time, um, I'd entertain a motion to approve Motion by Commissioner Lucas, we have a second. Yes. Second by Mayor Proton Clark. And Commissioner Jones, I'll hear from you. Yes, this, this, this would be especially appropriate today because of the presentation that Commissioner Lucas just did. But I just want to make sure that the Blue Star Markers, which is a non- Thank you, Commissioner Jones. We do have a motion and a second. Commissioner Lucas, you like to say something? Okay. Um, there are a number of things that, um, of items that were approved some time ago. This is one of those uh, items, but in the past, there have been some things that have been overlooked that have not been carried out. And a number of us have expressed concern uh, as to why some things are not finished and others are finished. And that is, that's been a concern of mine. But I want to say to this administration and to those who are seated around the horseshoe here, I want to salute you for finishing up a number of items that were left behind from previous administrations. Um, and um, the intent of our actions here are being carried out. And this is going to mean an awful lot to this community. We need to uh, make sure that we remember the bridges that have brought us across. Rosa Parks is one of those. Plus this is a majority black community. And we don't ever need to forget any opportunity or uh, uh, diminish any opportunity to pay respect to those folks who helped to be the bridges that have brought us across to where we are 
today. So I want to uh, thank those who have followed up with this, who have stayed on the case. And uh, I am just so pleased to be uh, voting in favor of this and look forward to being out there when we can unveil, cut ribbon, whatever we have to do. Uh, if y'all let me come back and do it. If you don't, I'm coming anyway. <laughs> so anyway, thank you, um, Mr. Mayor and fellow commissioners. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Lucas, well stated. We do have a motion and a second, so all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. I know as, uh, as Commissioner Lucas approaches her descent on this uh, journey that she's been on for a while with Commissioner, I know she has a lot of items on her agenda, as does Commissioner Mallory Jones, who's seated beside her, uh, and they're trying to check those boxes off as a bucket list before they get out of here. So we uh, we appreciate being able to do that, and I'm glad the whole Commission could support this effort. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we do want to move on to the um, public comments on non-agenda agenda items. We do have two that have signed up to speak tonight. Uh, on public comments, non-agenda items. Uh, the first one is gonna be Mr. Wade Horton. Mr. Wade Horton is here to speak about uh, surprise transit. <laughs> Thank you for being here tonight, sir. You know the routine, you get five minutes, but don't feel obligated to use all five of them. And we're from here from you in regarding transit. Ms. Meredith, are you with us tonight too? Okay, we got you next. I'm gonna change up one day. <laughs> yeah, I know, you're gonna throw me off my game. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Um, today I just wanna kinda touch a little bit on what I talked about uh, last week. And before I do, I, I wanna say that a lot of times when we come to give you guys a report, <coughs> whether it's uh, on the meeting that transit or it's things that need to be done, we do that to inform you so that you have an idea as our elected officials of, of, of the needs of the people who take public transportation. Because without us informing you, you would not know. And so I don't want you to be able to say, I didn't know. <laughs> but um, a few years ago, the Transit Authority took one of the buses off of the fixed route. The buses used to run every 30 minutes, but now they run an hour. Now, the American with Disability Act re recommends that you adequately staff your bus services so that it won't overwhelm paratransit because paratransit is, you know, for elderly and disabled people. But that's not the case. And, you know, it's been really hot. And now we got bad weather, like rain and stuff. So, and, and we got shelters mainly on the main roads, but for the people catching the buses, there are no shelters in the area, if there are some in your area, I'm not talking about you, but for the most part, they're not. Also, uh, the buses, bus hours under the Ellis administration uh, was extended. He got, was a, successfully got federal funding to extend the services from seven o'clock Monday through the Saturday to 11 o'clock Monday through Saturday. And we are requesting from the authority to uh, reinstate those hours so that people who, especially people who work night shift, and this is what's the understanding that the mayor had an idea for doing this, is so that people who work third shift could get to work and then when it's time for them to get off, they will be able to uh, catch the bus and go home. So we would like uh, you guys to support us on this. Uh, and th this is something that was already in the um, in, in in the meeting. Uh, I'm having a Joe Biden moment. Sorry about that, or Donald Trump. But um, it was something that was already uh, part of the transit that during the LS administration that was taken away. And we just request that you guys consider this. Uh, there there are nobody that serves from this body on the authority. So a lot of times you don't know. And so we try to inform you guys so that you'll know what is happening, but we do implore you to at least uh, investigate. Some of you may not know that the bus is ever ran until 11 o'clock. And I know some of you do because you was here on this board during that time. 
So I will be speaking about this because I know sometimes when stuff is taken away, it's never added back until we um, bring it up. And so I plan to be bringing this uh, message up to you guys. Thank you. Did y'all hear the end of what I said? Thank you, Mr. Horton. Yes, we did. Miss okay. <laughs> Reverend Lydia Meredith. Miss Meredith. Got your hat on you, but you don't have your shades on tonight. You threw me for a loop there. Thank you for being here tonight, and you've got five minutes, but as always, don't feel obligated to take them all. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. To our honorable Mayor Miller and this fine commission, my goal as an advocate is to push for quality of life for Macon Bibb community. As I address the Macon Bibb Commission every first and third Tuesdays, I want to be relevant and seek solutions to improve public safety, blight, humane animal control, EMT responses, etc. And the movement of initiatives that help challenges we see in our city. I want to thank this administration under the leadership of Mayor Miller for the task of moving the blight from this city. Uh, you can clap. I was um, having breakfast down the street at Mike's and they were talking about what a good mayor we had in this city and his leadership. So if you, you, if you wanna clap, you can clap. But I want, to, I want to say this so that the mayor will continue his efforts, because I, I don't know if he got for three or four more years to serve, uh, because we got 2,000 plus more blighted uh, properties listed with the county. And there's still blight uh, in Cherokee Heights Plaza and the Tom's Food Mart. And I know for a fact that this administration is working on this because I've been uh, talking about it for quite some time because it attracts crime and it needs redevelopment and it's right around the corner from where I live. Now I was really inspired by these young people who uh, received world medals. And in that vein, I want you to consider the proposal I brought last week to solicit and attract a professional sports franchise to make it. There's no reason why we can't have the Braves or something like the Braves or the Falcons right here in this city. The mayor is already trying to improve these venues so that we can have a place to go, but we need somebody to, to, to populate, to come to these uh, venues, to bring our citizens out, to spend money, to build our budgets, and to inspire our young people to be professional, uh, sports players, the vision taken all out, the vision being removed from the drug drama going on to uh, seeing professional sports, then they are inspired by what they see. Now, what I want to offer is my help, if I can help in any way with, with what I come every week to recommend because there's no need of me bringing these, these ideas without having an open hand to say, I'm here to help you, Mayor Miller, in a way that I can. God bless you all, and I'll see you next time. Thank you, Ms. Meredith. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, that concludes our business tonight. I have someone asked about point of personal privilege, so Mr. Howell, would you still like to do that, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Um, a lot of times we sit here in this horseshoe and – take the credit for a lot of things, and we do a lot of hard work, but we're not the only ones doing it. And I wanna recognize uh, some folks that, uh, it was a group effort, uh, but some foot soldiers that worked for Bibb County, some unsung heroes, and I wanna point them out. Uh, as most of you guys know, if you live in Bibb County, we're a class one fire department. And what that means to most everyone here 
is regardless of whether you own a business here, or you own a residential house or whatever, your insurance rates are as low as they can be because it's based on a class one and that's as good as we can get. This is something that we, there are inspections that are pretty intense to, to keep us there. Not just anybody can get it by applying. There's a lot of things that go into it. There are three separate organizations that have to uh, meet certain criteria and are graded on, on, on their performance. One is the uh, communications, which I believe is under the Sheriff's Department now. Uh, number two is obviously the Fire Department. Number three is the Macon Water Authority. Uh, we got a report in the last three or four weeks, I believe, that Macon is, has now uh, class one, again, our, our, uh, uh, qual our um, qualifications were renewed uh, you have to have at least a 90, and I think we got about a 95. But it was, it was combined efforts of everybody, and I want everybody to understand what a big deal this is that we don't hear a whole lot about. But when you get that insurance premium in the mail, remember, these folks work hard to make this happen. It's a big deal for us to be a Class 1, and I personally want to thank everybody that was involved in making this happen. Thank you. Mr. Bronson, you have the light on? Hey, how you doing? Um, doing Y'all are funny. How you doing? No, just two, two quick things. One, um, we do have an event coming up uh, for Making Bibb County Beautiful. Keep Making Bibb Beautiful. Uh, government Department has an, a shredding event taking place on uh, August 9th. So if you're uh, one of the gov government officials or working for the departments, if you have things that need to be shredded, please bring them down to Luther Williams Field. It's in the back rear parking lot between 9 and 12 o'clock uh, on August 9th. The other thing that I wanted to say, school is back in, right? School is back in. So to, um, to the families, to the students, wishing you much luck, much success, uh, praying for your safety, parents praying for your safety and sanity, and same goes to the teachers as well. Uh, thank you to the Bibb County School System, what you do, Superintendent uh, Dr. Sims, thank you for what you're doing in your leadership. And uh, we are here to help and assist as much as possible. So just want to say good luck to all Bibb County students and best foot forward for this year. Thank you, Mr. Bronson. Anyone else? Commissioner Lucas? I'll do it. And keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that the cameras are active in the school zones. Don't, don't go there. Don't go there. All right, that's it. I got it. That's it. Yes, I, I just was very pleased to see um, someone from Congressman Bishop's office, Ms. Summer Stafford, who uh, has only been on board, what, several months? But if you'll raise your hand, let everybody know that that is one of the folks that we can go to that's um, in Congressman Bishop's office. And uh, we've already been to her for several things. And so if you have issues, Social Security, other kinds of issues that fall under the federal uh, government oversight, um, she is there and is very efficient in handling those items for you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lucas. And uh, she's no stranger to here. She's been here several times, so we appreciate it. And thank you for being back, as well as our chamber representative. Raise your hand back there. Appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, we got a wonderful update recently from the chamber, and they said they're going to be more actively engaged with this commission. So we appreciate you being here again. I know you've been here multiple times. And uh, Mr. Brown's over here from planning and zoning. I know uh, he, uh, <laughs> he didn't stay here for that purpose, but we always want to try to recognize our folks when we can. But uh, like Mr. Howell said, we have a great group of people that work with us. They are uh, behind the scenes working hard each and every day, and we don't get a chance to recognize them as often as we want to. Uh, we just had the pleasure of getting up here and speaking with this mic. So uh, this concludes our agenda for tonight. Uh, it's been a great night. We're uh, looking forward to our next meeting, whenever that may be, and uh, we'll put that notice out soon. This meeting is hereby adjourned. <laughs>